Um, yeah, and what I would like to share with you today is um, how can we use um, free and open source software uh, in commercial software solutions. So uh, our product is a commercial product uh, that we sell. Um, and I am going to zoom in on our desktop application, uh, which is called the 3DI Modeler Interface. Um, and yeah, what we will be looking into is what is it? What is this 3DI Modeler Interface? Uh, and uh, well, we use QGIS uh, as a platform uh, for this modeler interface. So yeah, I'm gonna uh, highlight why did we make this choice and why is it the most suitable uh, platform for us. Um, and also I would like to go into, um, yeah, it, can it go together in a good way to have a commercial product that is partly based on uh, software uh, that was developed by, well, f a lot of volunteer time uh, uh, in a free and open source uh, way. Um, yeah, so 3DI, what, uh, what is this uh, product? Uh, it's a hydrodynamic simulation uh, software uh, which allows you to do interactive and uh, uh, online simulations. Um, and yeah, it is aimed to support hydrologists and decision makers to make uh, good decisions with regard to flood risks. Um, and other water management related uh, problems. Um, yeah, before I go into this further, I'd like to uh, make clear that uh, it's not a fully open source solution, so it's uh, a closed core uh, model. Um, if you want to use, uh, if you want to run simulations or use our online storage uh, solutions, um, you will need a license. Uh, and this part of the code is also uh, closed core. Um, but the whole ecosystem around it uh, is open source, uh, yeah, as much as our business model uh, permits. Um, um, yeah, so 3DI as a product, um, it is, uh, it allows you to uh, simulate flow um, in, yeah, basically follow water everywhere it goes. So overland flow, uh, streams and rivers, uh, urban water management, um, sewer systems, uh, also groundwater. Um, and it uh, can be used in uh, for many different applications such as uh, uh, heavy rainfall flooding uh, or coastal flooding or urban planning. Um, I'm gonna, uh, this is uh, yeah, one uh, thing about the setup of our uh, product is that you can uh, integrate it uh, into other software solutions. So, uh, for example, 3D uh, Digital Twins, um, uh, the, uh, the whole um, product is uh, based on an API that you can uh, use to integrate in, for example, these uh, 3D platforms. Um, I'm gonna uh, gonna go through the slides a little bit quicker because I realized I had only uh, 20 minutes instead of uh, 30. So, um, yeah. So, uh, what uh, users do is they build their models uh, locally uh, in this 3D modeler interface, and then they also run their simulations from. Uh, the modeler interface, but the simulation itself is, is uh, run in the cloud. And also the post-processing is uh, done in, um, in the cloud. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, for analysis of these simulation results, you can either do simple uh, analysis in a web interface or download your results and uh, go back to the modeler interface to um, do more advanced uh, analysis. Um, yeah, so our whole solution is based on uh, storing uh, and computing in the cloud. So all the models that users make are uh, are stored uh, online. Um, the simulations c can also be followed live in uh, in the browser, um, and you can interact with the simulation while you are uh, running it. 
um, and the storage and post-processing of uh, simulation results is also uh, done online. Uh, and um, yeah, all this is uh, accessible through uh, APIs. Um, so you can analyze the results through a Python uh, a Python API, and there's a REST API um, yeah, that uh, helps you to interact with uh, all the online uh, services that we have. Um, so that includes not only the model, but also uh, rainfall, historical rainfall, forecast rain. Um, yeah, they, they are services that are uh, that you can uh, immediately uh, connect to your model to run simulations to to make forecasts. Um, yeah, and all our uh, own applications, so the modeler interface and this uh, um, online interfaces that I uh, showed, they all interact uh, through this API with these online resources uh, and users can also make their own uh, software integrations or scripts uh, based on that same API. Um, yeah, so at the start I uh, said I will focus on the desktop application, the, the, our QGIS uh, um, build. Uh, we also use a lot of open source software in our online uh, stack, um, but I will not uh, go into the, into the details of that uh, today. Um, yeah, so the the modeler interface um, it's actually w when you are building software for hydrodynamic modeling, you have a very um, complex target audience uh, because you expect really a lot of skills from uh, your users uh, because they need to know a lot about water uh, and hydrology hydrodynamics they also need to to understand a lot about uh, how to process GIS data um, and of course they need specific knowledge on how uh, 3DI in this case how your specific modeling software uh, works uh, so a good uh, modeler, uh, yeah, really has all these three skills, and our experience is that uh, our users often have a background, for example, in water management. Uh, so they will have a lot of uh, experience in this field, but very limited uh, in in GIS or sometimes the other way around. Um, so the um, the most important thing about this modeler interface is that uh, we make all these parts uh, simpler. So uh, the, the less knowledge you need in these three fields to do the tasks that you are uh, that you need to do, the better. Uh, well, this is what the modeler interface looks like. Um, probably looks familiar uh, for those of you who use QJS on a daily basis. Um, the only difference really is that uh, the color scheme is a little bit different. Uh, and we have made uh, some uh, additions to that. Uh, but for our clients, um, well, we, uh, we uh, present it as uh, a single uh, product with its own name. We do not make a secret that uh, it is QJS. We, we are very open about that. Uh, but for, for our clients, they may not uh, necessarily know that it is QGIS. Um, yeah, so what the the kind of functionalities that we want to offer to users is uh, yeah allow them to analyze uh, flows both uh, in in time and space. Um, yeah, this is actually uh, an animation, but this is a PDF, so. <laughs> Uh, that kind of uh, fell out, uh, but the, the idea is that you um, you can click on the map and you will immediately see which part uh, which parts are upstream and downstream of where you uh, where you click. Um, yeah, we users can make side view uh, visualizations, uh, make water ba balance analysis of um, a specific polygon that they are dr that they draw. Uh, so yeah, it's actually quite a lot of functionalities, and I think in all these examples, you will see that 
uh, part of it is really specific uh, to hydrodynamic modeling, but also a lot of this, uh, a lot of the components that you see. Um, yeah, for example, here you have a background map. Um, here you have uh, features like uh, the computational grid or some other parts of the model that, which are just uh, GIS uh, features. Um, so what a lot of other products do, they kind of build a whole new uh, uh, interface and they uh, actually replicate a lot of yeah, f basic uh, GIS functionality uh, in that and then it's still it will never be as complete as um, QGIS. So that's why we we basically uh, yeah did it the other way around um, and and yeah said okay most of what you are doing as a modeler is basically GIS, um, but you need some extra specific functionalities. Um, so yeah we uh, provide them as uh, plugins and. Okay. Yeah. This this is also a very um, a slide that was uh, <laughs> building up, but in in a PDF you get it all at once. Um, so I'll, I'll go through it uh, step by step. Um, so the basis of the modeler interface is uh, a QGIS, um, and then we have actually uh, at the moment four different plugins. Uh, uh, and well, what we really try to do in the in the technical setup of these plugins is that all uh, as much as possible the the complicated logic is not in the plugins themselves, but in separate Python packages, which both makes it uh, easier to maintain. Uh, and a lot of this uh, code, for example, uh, code to generate a computational grid from your input data uh, is also needed in other parts of the stack. Um, so I, th th there was also a presentation about uh, um, QGIS plugin development and th this, th this was also one thing that was mentioned that if you make uh, yeah, a separate Python package uh, and just try to uh, just do the user interface stuff uh, in your plugin, that makes it much more manageable. That's also our experience. Um, yeah, and then there are these uh, four blue um, blocks that you see. Uh, you can't read it uh, in this PDF slide, but um, they are uh, third-party plugins that uh, yeah we've found out that a lot of our users use them, such as the uh, value tool, profile tool, uh, Serval. Um, and the fourth one is quick map services, I think. Um, and of course, yeah, uh, users can uh, add any other plugin they want uh, to that. Um, yeah, and th this setup allows us to uh, release uh, bug fixes or f uh, yeah, new features uh, quite easily. Um, because also it's it's split up in different uh, plugins, we can uh, uh, yeah release um, new versions of these different components easily, um, and we ask our users to reinstall uh, the uh, the long term release of QGS every uh, year. Um, yeah, and this uh, I think for. Q, uh, uh, GIS users or QGIS users, it would be super easy to manage this themselves. You would just install QGIS and then install uh, these um, these plugins. Uh, and also, there's a list of settings that you would need to set to make it all work uh, correctly. But our users are usually not GIS um, uh, experts. Uh, so what we do is we just package, uh, so this um, dash line box uh, is what we package in uh, an installer uh, and we offer this to our clients. So they, they just download an executable um, and th this installs 
uh, everything that I uh, explained here and also sets some, uh, some QGS settings that, uh, that we need. Um, yeah, and we actually, over the, uh, over the years, we have uh, really discovered the power of QJS. Um, there is, uh, yeah, the more you know about QJS, uh, the, the more you can leverage uh, this for your own uses. Um, and yeah, I think QJS, it's, it's really incredible how much you can, um, every single component uh, can be uh, tweaked uh, and uh, yeah, used in, in, in plugins or other ways um, through the QGIS API. Uh, so, okay, one of the, the, our most important things is also for users is the doc panels. Um, but we also offer a range of processing algorithms. Um, we do a lot with uh, styling options. Um, which, uh, yeah, I think in, in QGIS the, the possibilities are almost uh, endless. Uh, we use a lot of Python macros in attribute forms to help uh, make user input uh, easy. Um, also, custom expressions is one of the latest uh, additions um, that we uh, that we use. Um, yeah, and we also have uh, a simple uh, item in the main menu. Um, yeah, so wh why is it uh, so attractive to use uh, QGIS for this? Yeah, like I said, modeling is 90% GIS work. Uh, QGIS, of course, has a really huge and, and vibrant community. Uh, it's super configurable. Uh, and we have a lot of users that uh, yeah, just write their own tools. Uh, everything that's part of the whole model interface uh, is open source. Uh, so they can uh, either uh, yeah, steal uh, the code, uh, adapt it, uh, get inspiration from it, or build whole new plugins. Um, yeah, and one thing I also uh, really appreciate is that um, you get kind of we, we get some features that we we have on our wish list. We just get them for free. Um, uh, because it is part of QGIS, for example, and yeah, the example that you see here is that I really wanted to inform users if we have had updates of our plugin. So that was on our list. We should make some system that will give a pop-up when there is something new is available. But then I installed, uh, what was it, QGIS 3.28, and I found out that this had already been implemented. So, um, and... Yeah, this, I think every few, uh, maybe even every month, we have some bug fix or some extra feature in QGIS that we think, oh, wow, this is, this is really nice. Um, yeah, so how does this work? Because, um, it's, of course, it's really nice to have free features. But also, I know that for, uh, I made this screenshot a while ago. Uh, that 487 people contributed code to QGIS, and I'm pretty sure that a lot of this is just volunteer work, uh, and even if it's paid, it's probably, um, well, underpaid. Um, and yeah, we are actually trying to make money from this product, uh, while yeah, the people that, that work on it may not make money. So th there's a little bit of tension in that. And um, we, uh, there's a few ways that we try to um, uh, do this well. Um, well, one thing is we provide uh, direct financial support to uh, QGIS and uh, GDAL and one other open source software project, which um, I forgot. Um, we try to uh, yeah, be part of the uh, of the community, and uh, well, we do some of these things ourselves. But we also know that yeah, the, in in the open source community, there are developers that can um, do things much faster and better than us. 
Um, yeah, and we, we uh, uh, this gives job opportunities for them. Um, yeah, and where, where we can, we also contribute uh, code ourselves. Uh, and yeah, if possible, we if there are crowdfunding uh, options, we try to actively um, participate in them as well. Um, okay, maybe then to to wrap up with this uh, example of how how this works. So one package that we use is Geo Alchemy Two, um, and it has no support for uh, a Geo package at the moment. Um, but we really want to migrate from, well, we can currently use Spatialite and want to migrate to, um, to Geo Package. Um, so we contacted the author of uh, Geo Alchemy 2 and, um, well, he's uh, currently working on, uh, on this. And yeah, it's, it's small things, but for, for us, it's, it's good to know that if this is implemented, other people can also uh, use it. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, uh, I'm also interested to hear suggestions from you if there are other ways to do, uh, yeah, to, to do this well, um, and yeah, have a good way to combine commercial and open source, um, uh, solutions. Thank you.